Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylipsomstudios.co.uk and in today's video it's going to be a quick Studio One tip for all you Studio One users out there. So I'm using Studio One 4.6 Professional, but if you have the artist version this will work for you as well, I think, because I think you get Sample One in uh, Studio One Artist. Don't think you get it in Prime though. Um, but by all means go to the personas.com uh, website and uh, go to the products and Studio One and then in there you can do compare versions and just double check whether you get this or not. Um, but uh, here it is, Sample One. And what we're going to do is we're going to record a sample directly into, into Sample One and then we're going to move it very seamlessly to Impact so that you can control that uh, from uh, let's say something like Atom or Machine or a V-Drum set or something like that. Uh, and uh, you can map it how you want. So here we go. So the first thing we need to do is hit this record button here. And I need to check that I'm coming in from input left, which is where my mic is coming in. And I'm just going to basically sing a single note and record that. So here we go. Hit this record button here. La. Okay, not too bad. Uh, let's see if we can find that on the keyboard. Which would be uh, la. There we go. So there it is. La. Now notice it takes a wee while for it to play. La. And that's because uh, we've got all of this dead space at the beginning and the end. We need to get rid of that. So the first thing we need to do is go back to wave. And then you see this little triangle here thing. You grab that there. Drag that up. Now it should play a bit quicker. La. There we go. Almost instant. And then we'll trim the other end as well because we don't want all that dead space at the other end. And now that we've done that, what we need to do is we need to go to sample here, this R, sample, and it says three because I, I did a couple of test samples to make sure this worked, is we right click it and then we go trim sample. And now uh, all of that dead space is gone. La, 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 la. Not the most in tune note you're ever going to hear anywhere on the planet, but it works. And so the, the next thing we need to do is uh, then move it to impact. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how you can map this across the keyboard um, in sample one. So you go to mapping and then you see you've got this little blue dot here. I can map this down to say, um, let's say to C1 and then up to say C6. And now, la, 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 la. there we go, sounds like a line. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a line. So there we go, so now I've mapped it. Um, it, sound, it should sound pretty good. I can play chords now. La, 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 la. Yeah, garish. Okay, so <laughs> without being distracted any further, the next thing we need to do is we also need to open impact. So I'm gonna move this guy right across over here because um, impact takes up quite a lot of the screen as well. Drag this over to this side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna literally grab the sample from here and put it on C1 over here. So drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it, and let go. And there it is, it's in impact. So now I can close sample one. I can move impact across and I can now record enable impact and press C1. La, la, there you go. La. So every time I press C1, it's gonna trigger my sample now. So there you go, that's how you do it. So I hope that that was helpful and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.